know when you're ready, Melissa. You're ready? Okay, let's go. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. It is 7.01 on um, Leap Year Day 2024. This is a meeting of the North Andover Finance Board Committee. Excuse me. We have a quorum, and uh, I will call this meeting in order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to get this, we're going to get this meet, meeting uh, hopping by starting with public comment. Mr. Limpert, I presume? <laughs> no? I appreciate your offer. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Well, then we will move to the next item on our agenda, which is an esteemed presentation of the fiscal year 25 budget with our town manager and finance director. One last time, Lynn. Yeah, one last time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, first, I want to introduce, unless you already did. I did, just like a couple people, but not the whole board. Okay, Kyle, Warren, who I keep wanting to call Keith for some reason today. Okay. I don't know why. I'm sorry, Kyle, um, who has joined us. As that, maybe that's why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who has joined us as our new town accountant. Um, so he started, yes, he started on Monday, February 26th. So this is his fourth day, and he's come back. Um, so we're very happy. Uh, he even sat through, made it through a training today. So he did. I mean, if he made it through that, he can make it through anything. Um, but we're very happy to have him. He joined us from Triton, the regional school, where he was the business manager. Oh, great. Yes. Well, welcome, very welcome. Thank you. We're excited to have you, and uh, good luck. Okay. Yeah. We're welcome. getting him all up to date on our processes. Um, yes. He actually did our, our audit when he was with Powers and Sullivan, so oh, wow. he knows the community very oh, well. Good. So this was great. Um, and actually, on... Tuesday night, the board confirmed the appointment of Dennis Cohane, who will be replacing Lynn in July. Um, so we got a long lead time here, yeah. but we wanted yep. to make sure that we had somebody in place and that whoever that person was coming from would be able to get someone in place too. So he Good. is actually joining us from the town of Sudbury. He was my finance director there. We're very excited. There's no replacing Lynn, though. We're no. going to keep telling her that yeah. every day. Um, and he previously worked with Kyle at Powell oh. and Sullivan. Oh, very so, cool. yes, we're cool. reuniting all these teams. It's yeah. very exciting. Um, but it is weird to hire someone and then say see you in five months. So, um, but we're excited. It's going to be great. And it's good to have a plan in place for when Lynn leaves because she's very hard to replace. So we're excited to have that all in order and ready to go. We would agree too. We were sort of holding out hope that you might be able to find a way to reverse this, but. Would have been nice. Yeah. But I don't think, it's hard to reverse retirement. Other things yeah. it's easy to return, reverse, yeah. it's hard to no. reverse retirement. We, we love Lynn, but understand. Yeah. The bad news for Lynn is. We have her number. So, we'll find her daughter. Yeah, there you go. So, we're going to send you to her motorcycle. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> but we're very, we're very happy yeah. to have Lynn here finishing out this fiscal year with us and closing out what's going to be a difficult year with the deficit spending for the storm and many other insane balls that Lynn has in the air right now. So, we're very happy to have her as we finish this out. Indeed. So tonight, <laughs> we're talking about when Lynn is no longer with us, which is fiscal year 25, and this is our recommended budget. Um, I don't know how many of you watched me present this to the select board, but I'm pretty much going to present the whole thing again because yeah. sometimes people at home don't see it or you may have additional questions or see things that the board did not. So we are presenting a balanced budget within capacity um, as determined by all the forecasting exercises that we did with the revenue and fixed cost committee along with just more things that you know we learn as we go along. Um, the $137 million number includes everything all in, so um, that's all of our property taxes um, that we'll be getting, all of our tax title, all the local receipts, everything that we really talked a lot about at um, our forecasting meeting. So this is pretty much what we're expecting for fiscal year 25. So the revenues of fiscal year 25 budget, 
total $130 million, a 5% increase from last fiscal year if we're not including the free cash that we're using for reserves and capital transfers. So in the last chart you saw that included that free cash that we're using for our capital plan that you all already heard us present and also for reserve transfers that I'll talk about later, but to like stab our stabilization accounts. Our property taxes are estimated to grow by 6.4%. That's about a $6.2 million, that's about a $6 million increase from last year. Local receipts are increasing by 1.8%, about $200,000. So if you remember, for pretty much all of COVID, we really saw local receipts decreasing. And then last year, we actually saw an increase to 4%. And we were like, ooh, we're getting there. But now it's kind of starting to level off again. And I think that's kind of what the state is seeing too. Um, so, you know, the 1.8, I think it's low from what we typically would see, but it, it is where we are right now. People aren't really buying cars. Um, building and construction is kind of phased out a little bit because um, of interest rates. So I think we're just kind of seeing things be a little bit slower. And then local aid, as you know, per our policies and procedures, is level funded. And that's what we do that because the state is way behind us. Um, and so typically what happens is that our fiscal year starts on July 1st. And for instance, this year, the state passed their budget on August 8th, right? And so we really don't have good numbers to use. Um, and so what we do is we level fund and then we kind of increase the budget for the following year. So you all know what new growth is, but for people who don't know, um, Proposition 2.5 allows us to raise taxes by 2.5% plus any new construction. And new construction is improvements or new buildings, um, plus any debt exclusions or overrides that we have. Um, one thing to really note, I think, about new growth as we move forward, and you'll see this on some charts that I'm going to show you in a minute, is that we really don't have any large impact projects coming up. If we did have them, they'd already be at the ZBA, they'd already be at the planning board, they'd be talking to Gene and um, talking to Paul, and they're not. So we know that our new growth is really going to start to kind of get back to where it used to be. And we have had what can only be described as really extraordinary new growth. Um, so I think it's going to be a difficult time for some of our um, department heads maybe as we're you know saying no more than we ever have in the past um, because we really did have a lot of good years so we have told everyone and we mentioned this at our financial forecasting meeting that we do anticipate a tight budget for fiscal years 26 27 28 um, and so you can see this is historic new growth on the side um, obviously 2022 for those of you that weren't here then that was Amazon um, you know, we had this perfect storm kind of in 2022 where we had Amazon come on, but then additionally, due to the um, housing moratorium that was on town meeting, a lot of the housing all pulled permits at once because they weren't sure what was going to happen. And so that all came on. Um, and so we really saw kind of a strange boom, and now we're seeing that really go backwards. So this is what we typically see in new growth. And you can see that, you know, no major projects, very minimal new homes. And if you try to think, like, the last time you saw a, a new subdivision being built, right, in North Andover, it's, it's not too often. Um, minimal commercial growth, minimum industrial growth, and then personal property. And so usually we see around $655,000, and that's what we project when we do our forecasting exercises. So that part of the property tax for Amazon, half of the property tax for Amazon came on. Okay. Right. And the other half is coming on this year. But that's what the $2 million is primarily. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So and then if you look at what we're looking at this year, which is the $1.8 million, we know that the other $1 million of Amazon is coming on, and that's kind of giving us that bump. We've also done a really good job the last two years with Bill Mitchell of really looking at our personal property, determining what's depreciating, making sure people have good lists. You know, some people have things that depreciate, but they continue to buy new things. And if we don't keep auditing that and keep inspecting that, we lose those things. And so Bill has done, I think, an amazing job, yeah, at really keeping on that. Yeah, it's really been great. So, and then this is kind of shown, I think it's, easy, it's much easier to see in the chart, right? So that was where we've, we've been the last three years. Um, so, you know, really just level, kind of plugging along, and then whoa. Um, and so, you know, that whoa has been great from 2002, 2003, 2022, 23, 24, and even 25. Um, but I do think it's going to be a tough bubble um, to watch us burst for next year. Um, so we're preparing for that um, and getting ready. 
So this is just kind of an idea of our revenue. So you can see the majority of our budget, not unusual for a medium-sized town like ours, is really property taxes. Uh, about 78.8% of that property tax in fiscal year 24 was made up of residential. So really residential-based. Um, you know, Some of the industrial growth, the personal property growth helps that in the past few years. I think when I first started here, it was maybe 81%, um, but it really sticks with that residential base. So this is what we have for our fiscal year 25 budget expenditures. And this is the number you're seeing here, the 136 million is all in. So that's our state assessments, you know, what our um, capital, our reserve transfers. Um, it does not include water and sewer because those are enterprise funds and we'll talk about those as we go through this presentation. So this kind of gives you an idea of what our expenses look like and I know I say this every year but the education is really a lot more like 67 percent um, because they have a portion of the employee benefits they share the unclassified shared costs with us we do not give any of the capital or reserve costs of attribute though, any of those to education but anything that is attributed once a year Lynn and Jim get together and make sure that we agree on those so they can report those numbers to the state so this we, as you may have noticed, we moved to a new electronic um, budget book this year and it has actually some really interesting tools um, and so this is just kind of showing this a different way um, but I thought it was helpful to kind of see that really the education budget is about half of what we spend, not more. So the fiscal year 25 budget um, increases about 4.5% in departmental spending from fiscal year 24, not including those reserves. The municipal departments are going up by 3.14% and the education budget is going up by 5.5% plus there's about $700,000 in a reserve account for the middle school addition operational costs. So if you remember correctly when we laid out facilities master plan 2, we held um, some of the Amazon money to use in a future year, and that future year has arrived, um, because the middle school addition will be ready, we hope, in mid-year. Um, so the thought is that the addition will be built before they go back to school. The kids that move into the addition while they're doing kind of the restoration on different parts of the building. Um, so we won't need this money right on July 1st, which is why we're putting it in a reserve, and then we'll transfer it over when it's time to do that hiring. Into the operational budget the following year, yes, you think that forward. was the plan? Absolutely, finished, yep, that's yeah. the plan. So that was money that, if you remember, you know, the levy capacity that we've been kind of carrying, we're still carrying, and we'll get to that sheet. It's a smaller number because we're bringing this money on. Yep, and so the plan's working, um, which is great if we continue to kind of um, stay diligent and strict and continue it, and which can be really hard, right? And we see that, yeah, we see that this year a lot, um, saying no to people, and I think it will be hard over the next few years too when kind of projects come up and we're like, well, you have levy capacity, and we're like, well, you know, it's for the Kittredge teachers. And so um, just kind of continuing that rhetoric is going to be really important as we move forward. But so far, we're working, and it's great. Um, the budget book is going to show a smaller increase than the 5.5% for the schools, and that's because the town has agreed to take on all of their electricity costs. So we moved all of their electricity into the shared services budget. It's in facilities now. If you remember correctly, we did this with postage. Uh, we did it with gasoline. We're in this insane situation where people are like billing other departments for things. And what was happening was that last year in particular, this was kind of became uh, very obvious to me and Lynn, that everybody was trying to guess what electricity was going to be. And so you'd have one department could come in and they'd say, I estimated 29% increase in electricity for next year. And then someone come in, else come in and say, I estimated 6%. And we were like, what is happening? <laughs> and you know what? That's not their expertise either, right? So we consolidated all of that. We also consolidated all of the facilities costs, and I'm going to talk about that on a slide in a little bit. So the municipal budget is increasing by $1.3 million, and the school budget, not including that $700,000, is increasing by $3.3 million. This is a chart talking about the historical spending um, of the school, something that people are kind of always wondering about. So this um, $62 million number, it doesn't include the $1.6 million that we moved for facilities and for electricity. It doesn't include the 700 k reserve, um, so important to see. But I think, you know, the commitment that we've made to the schools over the last five years is pretty visible as you're seeing the budget go up by over $12 million. So, Paul, can I ask a question? Is this apples to apples, like did you adjust out the electricity and no, so you'd have to add 62 plus 1.6. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and a gas plus 700 when we Whatever right. the result yeah. of the negotiated contracts that were just done, that's that's incorporated for fiscal year Incorporated, 25. obviously, into yes. 25. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And what was the impact on 24? Were we able to? There was no impact there on was 24. No impact. Okay. And so we, the schools had um, appropriated a certain amount of money that they had anticipated the increases being. Oh, okay. And so they used that. Right, okay. And that covered, obviously covered that then, right? Yes, there is going to be a, a warrant article, and I talk about later, about um, moving a portion of the special stabilization account, about 220, a third of it. Um, but they, other than that, they, are, they have the salaries under control for next year, this year. So it's a little bit about health insurance. I mean, usually I come and I'm like bragging about how excited I am about the health insurance. <laughs> Um, today I'm less excited. I am, uh, so you know, I'm on the GIC as one of the commissioners. Uh, we did vote rates today. Unfortunately, we're looking at a 9.5% increase, probably the highest um, that we've seen in quite a long time. Um, part of that is COVID and people going back for their preventative care. Part of it, they say, is weight loss um, drugs, that they've seen a lot of increased costs due to that. Um, so it will be interesting, and we're continuing to kind of work this through. Um, one thing I will say is that this year we did roll out for the first time an opt-out program where we pay employees an annual payment um, to basically pay opt-out of our insurance. You have to show that you're on separate insurance. This year we had 23 people take advantage of that, and so that's a pretty significant savings, about $200,000. Uh, we're hoping that people will kind of buy into that program now it is an annual payment. Um, in other communities I've worked in, usually you'd see about a savings of 400000 So we'll see what happens. But I will say, when I first did this presentation like back, it was only 12, and now it's up to 23. So I think people are like kind of talking about it. I got my payment. And they're like, what payment? But wow. it's $2,000 for an individual and $4,000 for a family. Annually? Annually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's something that just can really work on keeping these costs down. So, so just going over to a spouse's. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that makes sense. So it's been a good program, um, and we'll continue to, to promote it because I think as people begin to trust in it, they may say, oh, I'd like $4,000, right? right? And so um, we'll try to make it as easy as possible. And so I think we'll see when we'll see movement and when we'll know if we're going to have more success will be April when we go through open enrollment. Okay. And this is just kind of a chart showing the health insurance costs over the years. So I just want to talk a little bit about our highlights. Um, so we, we moved our copy machine leases from all of our municipal budgets to the IT, just like postage phones. <laughs> um, we literally had, um, I don't know, 37 leases that were being in, paid from all different departments um, and also sourced separately. So we weren't even getting the buying power yeah. of all being together. <laughs> so we've moved those all together, uh, which we're pretty excited about. We've got the fourth year of the Finance Committee Reserve funded at $1.5 million. I think we'll find out that's going to come in very handy as we finish out this year. Um, we do have salary reserves for our unsettled collective bargaining agreements. We currently are in negotiations with um, all three of our units in the police as well as fire. Um, our COLA for the town employees is at 2%. We have the million dollar debt holdover, which we're planning on using um, for the RecPlex. And so more to come on that. There'll be an a separate article that you'll all see that will have to do with some portions of that, but this part will be in the budget. And if you remember, kind of the plan is that as debt falls off, we're not letting it get gobbled up by the operating budget. We're holding it because we're going to need it for Kittredge. Um, Kittredge will probably, based on the current timeline we're on, open in 2029. So 2027, 2028-ish, we'll be taking that debt. And so we're just continuing to kind of hold that and um, try to keep it. But what the nice part about it is it does give us a million dollars a year um, to use for one-time items. And so something like the RecPlex is a good example of that. Um, as part of the DPW's plan for improvements in service, we have a new tree climber. It's actually called that. It's the person in the bucket truck. Um, currently, we only have one of those people, and we certainly have the need for enhanced tree trimming. Um, so we've decided that that is a great investment, and so we have a second tree trimmer. And then additionally, we have a shared position with facilities that's a $10,000 cost, but because um, it's mostly funded by American Rescue Plan, ACTS, 
Um, and it's going to be a recycling and trash slash sustainability coordinator. Um, recycling has not been going great. So it's better than it was, but it was not going great. And so we need somebody to really be on the customer service front of that. Um, and there's things that we can do. I don't know. If, it's hard. I know. Um, someone other than me. No. That's kind right? How do you feel about recycling? Yeah. Yeah. It's been really hard. You didn't tell struggled. Kyle? Yeah. We've struggled. And... Um, it's been better recently because they've stopped using the automated trucks, but that's not the solution. So we just need to figure out, is it a route optimization? Is it something that we're doing incorrectly? Um, <laughs> so we think this will be a big help. We hope this will be a big help. Um, um, what will people have to talk about? Do we just... Uh, it's not finance related, that's but okay. I'm just curious if you know the answer. Do we set the routes or does the company so that the we contract So the have been the same the for 25 years. Policing. So for both trash and recycling, they have not changed in 25 mm. years. And the biggest issue is that on Tuesday, the route is so much longer than any other route. Mm. And if they fall behind on Tuesday, yes, then sir. the rest of the week is done for. So I'm a Tuesday. I'm a Tuesday. You're a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think most, I bet two thirds of you are probably yeah. a Tuesday. Yeah. Uh. Um, it, I just historically always was. And um, change is hard. Yeah. So, you know, I think we've kind of all said, you know, we should just, pull up that band-aid and change the some people's dates. So they're working on that now, but this person would be key in kind of the communication Good. and stuff to that. So <laughs> But so we said that or the company that we contract says So that? I would say it's a group effort. Mm. So we have two different vendors. We have a different vendor for trash and another vendor for recycling. The recycling pickup is free. We do not pay for that at all because it's part of our, our um, host community yep. agreement. So which actually kinda adds to the difficulty of enforcing, mm -hmm. right? Um so, yeah. So it's, this is a very random thing, but cool. when I was in college, I did a root optimization project as a, like a special project. So maybe you guys should see if Merrimack has a degree in uh, logistics. No, 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 no. <laughs> but if they have a degree in logistics, they might have yeah. a person who wants to do that as a project. Absolutely. I mean, we've done it for snow plowing, <laughs> and it's so helpful, you know. Yeah. But snow plowing is much less um, of an impact on all of you. You won't notice that we've changed the route, right? Mm -hmm. Trash and cycling, people notice they change the route. People are very passionate about trash, well, which I get. So. And, the key, and the key is, and you said it, is we, we, we pay the plowhouse. Right. Yes. We don't pay the yeah. recycling, recycling people. Yeah. People notice when their trash is still sitting there. They do. Right? Yeah. So they yeah. pretty much one of the two things that we absolutely have to get right. And so yeah. uh, we have to get this right, and so we're committed to doing that. Oh, God love you. <laughs> and then the other kind of, the, well, I would say the biggest change is to facilities. So we have facilities has been, since I've been here, a shared service um, between the schools in the town. Uh, that was kind of a lie, I would say. <laughs> uh, we never fully consolidated it. We never really staffed it. We never funded it. And it's not really um, unusual. The last community I worked in, it was the same thing. And I think some of that kind of stems from some amount of mistrust between the two cost centers that... They're going to hold on the money, and my building's not going to get money it needs, and I'm afraid to do this. And I think that working together, we've shown that we can be a great team and fund what needs to be funded. And so the schools and I have come together and said, let's do this right. Like, enough's enough. So we moved all of our building maintenance costs from all of our non-enterprise fund budgets to the facilities budget. So that's schools. I know this is going to sound weird to believe, but... Kathleen Keenan at the library was in charge of all of the facilities in her building. Like if something went wrong, she had the budget, she had to make the calls, and that's not her expertise, right? right. And so, and it's also not really where she should be spending her time. So we've moved everything um, for stability and efficiency, and we've created kind of a whole new department. Um, and it really literally is a whole new department. So the orange is Steve. Um, we have a part-time admin who's really kind of a, I don't know, not even a part-time, no. but we have an admin, it's Bernadette, she's shared. We have already budgeted for the operations person and have had trouble filling it. We actually are interviewing right now and have great candidates, so we're very excited about that. And the sustainability person is the person that's funded from our American Rescue Plan money. So what we are trying to do in this budget is create three new positions um, that would all be skilled workers. One would be a plumber, one would be an HVAC, and one would be an electrician. And the reason this kind of came to light was that anything we need to do in a building right now, we have to have a contract to come in. So if our toilet seat is broken, a plumber comes and changes the toilet seat. One time I changed it. But other than that, right, like this is what's happening. Um, so in fiscal year 23, for electrical, we spent $170,000. 
Fiscal year 22 for plumbing, we spent $99,000. In fiscal year 22 for HVAC, we spent $256,000. And we know we can do it better if we take that money and put it into having an employee. Mm -hmm. So I think of this like town council, right? Town council's here, she helps us with all of the general municipal stuff, but if we have something crazy happen, like we need to negotiate a solar contract or North Andover Cam needs their contract renegotiated, we bring in a specialist and we would still do that. So we haven't cut any money from the budget. Um, we've just kind of moved money around to fund these three positions. Um, we're gonna be really creative because it's hard to find these types of employees. So for even the operations person, we put it out both full-time and part-time. And we were like, we could take two part-time people. Yeah, yeah see, who yeah. just want to get in with the town, you know. Yep. Um, so far, we seem like we have luck with the full-time for the operations. The plumber, the HVAC, and electrician would be union employees, um, probably out of the DPW unit, okay. probably where they would make the most sense. Um, but we're really excited about this. I think it's going to give Steve Foster the tools he needs to successfully manage all of our buildings. Um, if you think about kind of our building portfolio, it's huge. And we're investing a lot of money, especially in the schools right now. And we've invested a lot of money in these buildings. And so, you know, using this money now to maintain them, I think, is going to be a smart move in the long run. Mm -hmm. So that's our plan for this. So it does make an impact on our staffing. We'll go from 225.7 employees to 229 mm -hmm. employees. Um, but we are doing that without really causing an increase because we're using that money we were using for um, consultants. So again, um, as you know, as part of Facilities Master Plan 2 and as part of the Amazon TIF coming on, uh, we are continuing to carry levy capacity. Um, when the Amazon came on board, we brought on almost, what, 80% of the value at once, right? Because we had that, we'd accepted that law that allowed us to bring forward where the building was at the end, at the June 30th. Um, if we raised this amount and decided that we didn't want to wait for the TIF to come on, which which would, could be an option, we could decide to do that, um, it would be about an $1,100 impact on the average single family home taxpayer. Not something we want to do. Um, it also would really interfere with Facilities Master Plan 2, because this is the money that we're saving for the Kittredge operating costs, right? And that includes the employees, the teachers they need to fill the new classrooms, uh, electricity costs, custodian costs, everything that goes along with that. Um, and so, you know, I think for some people it's hard because we're, they're like, you have capacity, you're leaving money on the table. And we are, right? But we're doing it purposefully because the impact on the resident would just be catastrophic if we rose this all at once. And by doing it slowly through Facilities Master Plan 2, we're making those increases come on board when the Amazon TIF is increasing. So if you remember correctly, the TIF the first two years is an 80% break on taxes and 60%. And so we're bringing this on in that same level. And so it's not impacting the residential, which is, is the goal. Yeah, because this plan was <clears throat> designed to impact individual taxpayers at the m minimal, I was going to say at the minimal list, but at the most minimal level. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's kind of that, you know, we've pledged to do that, right? right. Um, and this is another spot where it would be so easy to say, and Lynn and I have this conversation, like, oh, we got to cut $20,000. We could just take it. Let's just take it now, right? But then we're both like, no, we need to cut the $20,000. And so, you know, it, it, it can be easy to get, I don't want to say lazy, but it can to just be like, oh, you know, it's fine. Nobody will care if it's 1,180,000, but it, it's impactful. And so we're trying to really stick with it. Um, and explain to people who are kind of asking for extra money that this is this is why we're doing it this way. So the other two budgets that we have are the sewer enterprise fund budget and the water enterprise budget. budget. You'll be happy to know that the state has approved our Stevens oh, estate re uh, revolving account um, the day before we presented the budget to the select board. Um, <laughs> so we're very happy about that. That's going to be great. That meant that we got to pull all of that out of the budget and have to worry about it this year. Um, I will tell you that excitingly, they, if you remember correctly, the way the contract worked was that if the um, vendor had over $800,000 in revenue, they had to pay 8% of that to the town. So they paid an additional $40,000 this year on top oh, of their rental payment. Yeah, so they, they've been having a lot of success. They're booked a lot of weekends. Um, and if you haven't been up there, they've done 
a ton of work. It's beautiful. The facility. Yeah. Who, who really would have known does. that worked out so well, huh? Yeah. Quite the new chapter for it is. It's, 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 that's huge. Yeah. What a difference. And just investing back in it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you, at some point, we'll have to have Laurie come by and give you a, just a presentation on what they've done. They renovated the entire gatehouse. And they have people living in. They have a caretaker living in it now, so they have somebody on site all, all the time. All those things that just yeah were something people wanted for years and years it's and amazing. years and years, and to have it, ha that's a wonderful success. Yay! It looks beautiful, There's and so, so controversial. Yeah, this CPC this year in CPC we have an article um, to stabilize the stables. Um, <laughs> stabilize the stables, mm -hmm. which we used to call something else, but we discovered is actually the stables. Um, so that's kind of the next thing that we're doing there. Yeah. Um, and then eventually Mass Audubon would love to use that site. Um, and we're just waiting now. The state only has two people that are reviewing CRs. So um, it's taking a really long time to go through that process, but the CR should be done shortly too. So I think that's going to be um, a huge success. And it's, it's nice to go in there and have everything looking great. So. We're very excited. Um, so this is the sewer and budget. It, it is going um, down a little bit um, just because we're doing less capital this year than we have in the past. And um, the, the sewer assessment is going up by about $140,000. We're still seeing the debt is falling off, right? We're still seeing um, increased costs due to supply and demand issues for materials. Materials are still weird. It's kind of interesting right now. For for instance, like the middle school came in lower than we thought it was going to be. Um, some street work has come in lower than we thought, but then other projects will come in, and usually for materials, high. Hmm. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. But you know, the stuff they buy, the piping and everything like that, they're still seeing uh, increases there. And then for the water enterprise fund budget is up, and that is because we're using retained earnings to do capital. Um, really more than anything else. The retained earnings in the Water Enterprise Fund budget is $5.3 million, and the retained earnings in the Sewer Enterprise Fund budget, I have it somewhere, is 4.8. Um, and don't forget, the retained earnings of these two budgets are basically just the free cash of those. We do not anticipate a rate change for water or sewer. One thing that we are watching in water um, is that we are going to need to implement a new meter program so right now, uh, we have meters that you drive to. They're, they're pretty old school, they're pretty old. Um, so the meter reader has to actually get in their car and drive around the town to pick up the radio frequencies from the meters. Now there's new meters where basically I could sit here, press a button, and they would tell me everyone's readings in town. Um, that will be the next big project that we'll see coming on. It's something they're preparing for now. Okay. It's going to increase improve billing. If you have a leak, it will basically alert you to the leak. Um, it will have an app. It's very sophisticated, and I think people will really like it, um, but it will be probably the next big thing we see come out of the water. And then as far as our reserves go, so our stabilization account balance is $6.1 million. Uh, we will be appropriating $80,000 this year to get that to the financial reserve amount. Our capital stabilization, excitingly, is at $8.1 million. We're going to appropriate 350000 plus probably the million dollars for the RecPlex, and then we're going to use um, $4.4 .4 million in the capital program, as you know, and that's for the design of the Kittredge and the design of the fire station. And so that was really always the plan. If you remember correctly, for the last three years, we've kind of cobbled that debt holdover um, and some of that extra levy capacity, and we've transferred it over to this capital stabilization account so that we could save it for that Kittredge design without having to take a bond for that. So that's exciting. The MSBA is, I think, very pleased because, which is the Mass School Building Authority, is very pleased because of the um, commitment that they've seen from us and kind of getting these funds available and really showing, like, the foresight to get that program moving. And last time we checked, I want to say they're at about 49% reimbursement. We actually, at when we first started this, were more like 41%, and so that's exciting to see. Great. Yeah. Well. The fire station too. Fire station. So that's two. where we're doing the um, additional bay for the ambulance. Which one's fire station two? Again? That's the one that's right here. Okay. Near the youth center in the common. Okay. And the um, oh, okay. yeah, and the bunks for female firefighters. 
Um, the OPEB trust fund balance is at six million. We'll be doing our annual appropriation of seventy-five thousand. If you remember correctly, that came out of a report that was done prior to me being here. There was a committee that was brought, put forward. Chris Nobly was, I think, the chair of it, and their recommendation was to put seventy-five thousand dollars in the trust annually. Yep. The special ed stabilization imbalance is at seven hundred ninety-seven thousand um, dollars. You know, I'm really trying not to use this as a crutch for the budget. Um, I think that if, and we can talk about this when we get to your policies, but if we have a reserve account that we're planning on going to every year for $250,000 or $150,000, that means we're really underfund underfunding our special ed, right? So that's probably not the best way to go about that. So we've really tried to use your financial reserve for that because that we think that's more appropriate. Um, so we'll continue to do that. The last thing we want to do is create a structural deficit in special ed. And then our free cash was certified at $12.1 million. So we do have some free cash articles. Uh, we were going to have the design of 400 Great Pond Road. That's actually not going forward this way. We're using something else. We have the $41,583 from the Stevens Estate, which is that excess revenue received. We have $6.6 .6 million in capital. We have a retirement payout of $180,000. So we had a kind of weird year where we ha next year where we have a lot of people who are retiring much more than usual so typically we see about twenty five thousand dollars in retirement payouts um, part of this is because police officers and firefighters tend to come in in classes and then they so you might hire four and then they tend to leave at the same time um, and this is kind of the perfect storm for that but because it was a one-time revenue sort revenue a one-time expenditure it didn't make sense for us to put it into the budget um, and pull for anywhere else so we're doing it this way and then if you remember correctly, last year the fire chief had created a new revolving account and basically it's for money that we received back from the state for our Medicare transports. Um, it, we collected some money this year that we want to put into that revolving account, which is $338,000. And the purpose for that revolving account is so that he can purchase ambulances and do repairs on ambulances without having to go to free cash or take a bond. Um, so he actually is doing almost all of an ambulance in this year's capital plan using that revolving account. And we've had some good success with these. We also have a revolving account, if you remember, that we created two years ago that um, is for vehicles. And so before we were trading vehicles in and we would get like $1,000. And so now instead we're selling them on Munibed, which is like an online auction, mm -hmm. and we're getting between twelve dollars and $15,000. And so that money is going back into this revolving account. It's offsetting the new vehicles that they're purchasing, which is great. And they, they, everyone's very, very into it now. Um, <laughs> a little pushback in the beginning because it's much easier to trade your car in, right? Um, but the company actually comes out, takes the pictures, loads it on. I mean, we've sold dirt bikes. We've sold all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's been really, really successful. So we're continuing to do that. Um, but this is just another way of us trying to kind of offset those costs. And then our total free cash at the end of the day will be $4.2 million, which is still high. Um, you know, we've been historically carrying between five and $6 million. Expenses are definitely higher this year than they have been in the past for capital. And I'm sure you remember me saying this when I did the presentation. Like, we didn't expect that we were going to have a million dollar track to do this year, but that was because of the floods. So there were certain things that we just have to do this year that we prioritize. And so we're carrying a little less than usual, um, but we also have more free cash than typically a community of our size would. So what will happen at the end of the fiscal year is that this free cash kind of goes away, and then it gets recertified, um, and then we'll have, be able to use it again next year with whatever we carry, whatever we have new for next year. And if you're interested, our OPEB liability as of June 30th is $119.8 million. And so, if it makes feel anybody feel any better, our OPEB liability on June 30th, 2021 was 144 million. So, you know, it's, it could be worse. Um, but I think the fact that we have the trust fund and we're putting money towards it is great. And I anticipate that soon the state will come up with some kind of solution or directive for this. Are there any other communities that have a fund like that? Everybody I mean, pretty much. Because when we first started it, it was like nobody had anything like yeah. that. Everybody pretty much has the trust fund now. Mm -hmm. I don't know that everybody is putting any money in it. Yeah. But we all were kind of required by Gatsby to create the trust fund. Okay. So everyone created it, but not everyone's putting money in it. I see. I just wonder how we compare, yeah. you know. I'm just curious. Wellesley's completely funded and didn't. Um, so that was retirement. Wellesley's the only one completely funded. Oh, they really? They did a bond. Wow. They did a bond. 
That's in, impressive. In addition to putting that $75,000 per year, didn't we also come up with something where we're putting, like whenever we hire a new employee, we're putting an additional, the, yes. an additional right. sum? Mm -hmm. So I guess is that, that'll be there? That will be there as a separate article, too. A separate, yeah. okay. And I forget what that is. It's 25? Six. Six, six, six per. And it actually, kind of interestingly, I think, feels when you see the school department's ten years. ten years, when you see the school department's presentation, they're actually going to have less um, employees this year. So I think um, it will offset, through attrition, it's going to offset um, some of our health insurance costs, too, which is going to be helpful. So. And then we just want to thank Lynn, because, <laughs> right? It's not that old. Yay, yeah, Lynn. Um, most people are like, you know, it's my last year, and I'm just going to create the same old thing. And she rolled out the whole new platform. So it's very impressive, and we're very thankful to have her. Yeah. So. Is there, is there going to be a parade? Or I'm going to have a parade. <laughs> Fireworks. Yeah. Could be. There's definitely going to be a cake. I can promise you that. Seriously. Lynn's going to empty out her closet, and everybody has to wear it. Oh, <laughs> You we'll can, all be sitting. You can come in the ladder truck after Santa and Mrs. Claus <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. I think in the bucket truck. Oh, that's you right. Know? The bucket that's truck. a good idea. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Melissa and Lynn. Um, questions? Anyone? And I will say, I know this is the first time you're seeing this. You know I'm always happy to come back yeah. to you. And any of my department heads are always happy to answer questions. <clears throat> So I, I have a couple sure. questions, if that's okay. So um, when we were when you were talking about um, new growth, mm -hmm. you know, you said that um, you you know we expected it to slow down, and, but you were preparing for that. Can you talk a little bit more about how that preparation works? Yeah. So a lot of the preparing is basically getting everyone's mindset in around the fact that we're not going to have the banner year we've had the last yeah. three years um, and so that's you know why having the tri board meeting I think is right. super important because we need to set these expectations now um, and we're not gonna see and I think it's it's almost to me a double whammy in some ways because not only have we had these really kind of great new growth years when really nobody else did we also had all this federal funding right, right. through Absolutely. the CARES Act and then yeah. through um, the American Rescue Plan um, and that's all going away too, right? And so some of that was for the schools with their ESSER funds. Um, some of it was for us. And so, you know, we've really been in a lot of ways spoiled the last few years, right? And so, you know, we're forecasting out saying to people, listen, you know, this is what this is going to look like. There's not going to be new employees unless we figure out new ways to bring them on. Um, we've got to be really careful with our COLAs. Um, and we know all of that, right? Like what the ramifications of all of that are. Um, and just trying to explain that to kind of the units as we're going forward um, and to the department heads. We're very lucky because we have very healthy reserves, yeah. right? Um, and we were able to build these up the last couple of years. But we also don't want to have to use them, right? Because this isn't the rainy day. This is just the normal day, right? So um, we've kind of just been trying to set that table for people okay. and not bring on anything that's not sustainable. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned rainy days. Uh, oh. So that leads me to my next question. Um, the deficit spending you talked about, could you yeah. could you give us a little bit more sure. on that? So as you know, um, after the storm, we declared a state of emergency. As part of the state of emergency, DOR gave us permission to deficit spend. We are able to deficit spend up to $3.6 million. We did 1.5. Okay. Um, the good news is that the state um, did do a, an earmark for us in the amount of $750,000. So we will be receiving that to offset the 1.5. Right. We got it. We got it. We got it. Um, to offset the 1.5. Um, so that was, that was big for us because um, it really kind of solved a lot, at least half of that problem. We have been working with the insurance company. I think we've received one check so far for $90,000. Two checks? Three checks. Totally $90,000? Over 100 all right, a little over a hundred thousand. Not, you know, we put in claims of almost three million. So, you know, I think we're still continuing to have conversations with them about what that should look like and would look like. Um, but we do anticipate we'll have a deficit. Um, now, when I say we do anticipate we'll have a deficit, I don't mean that we're going to end the year in the red. I don't think. Um, so there, 
because of the state of emergency, we are allowed to, if we ha do have a deficit at the end of the year, amortize it over three years, which is what we would choose to do. So there's a couple options when you go into the red. They either steal it from your, new, from your free cash, <laughs> right? Um, or you have to raise it in the following year, which would greatly impact our budget and kind of right. be impossible, right? So, you know, we'll be, we've basically said to all of our departments, no buying anything you don't need. Um, the schools have had the same conversation with their employees now. Um, and we have the Finance Committee Reserve. And so far, we are deficit spending for snow and ice, but just starting to deficit spend for snow and ice. Um, and the majority of that cost actually has been in sanding. So I don't think we're in dire place right now. Okay. Uh, and that's because of Lynn <laughs> more than anything, right? Because she keeps such a close impact on and she, she knows everything we have and she knows what she needs to move. Um, but I don't think we're in as bad a situation as we could be. Okay. There's other communities that are, are in a worse place with their deficit spending. Um, so like Lemonster did have a state of emergency declared by FEMA, by MEMA, and then FEMA denied it. And okay. so they had been deficit spending, you know, we had kind of already known, we're, we better be careful in what we spend here. Um, but they're in, in more shape than we are, so. Okay. And then uh, just one last question for me. Um, you, there were several mentions during tonight's presentation of the RECplex. Um, I've not heard an update on the RECplex, and um, so I'm just, was just, my curiosity was piqued. Yeah, so we're meeting about. with the select board on Monday in executive session. I do anticipate that we'll have an article for the RECplex. Um, we are trying to figure out how that is not a debt exclusion. Yeah. Um, and so Lynn and I are working on that right now. Um, there is a CPC application in front of CPC as well. Um, and so, you know, where we are right now is that the lawsuit is still ongoing. Um, the latest price estimates are at 18 million. The original appropriation was around eight. Yeah. Um, we, we know that there are several items that CP, are not CC, CPC eligible. Right. Originally about $1.4 million was appropriated from non-CPC funds, right? And we need more like $5 million from non-CPC funds. Um, plus on the other side of that, um, there's additional CPC funding that would be needed in order to move the project forward. And so those are conversations that are happening right now. So there will be warrant articles related, and they certainly will come before all of you because yes. they will yeah. indeed be financial um, as we kind of move forward. I mean, our ultimate goal right now is to try desperately to do it without a debt exclusion. And so that's kind of where we are. Um, because if we do have to ha have a debt exclusion, it does require an election. Um, we have five elections this year, and I can't in good conscience put another election on. Well, that's where I was going with my question. Yeah. Is it about the debt exclusion. So it would have to wait till next March, which okay. would be unfortunate. So, and you can't really piggyback on any of the elections that we're having. Um, like you can't have a, you, you'd have to have two completely different elections running at the same time to try to do it like on the presidential. It just, it's not, it would be very confusing for people. So, um, it's already, right, I agree. People are going to have voter fatigue as is. Well, it's not just that. I mean, if you, if you mailed in your, 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 your ballot, you're like, oh, wait, which election was that? Yeah. Honestly, I already, I've already done that. I've already like, yeah. what, which one? You know, and who, you know, it is weird. I mean, in this year's year. budget, we have an extra $50,000 in mailing for elections just because there's so many elections. And if you sent in for your absentee ballot or your vote by mail ballot, you automatically get all four. So even if you're only going to be gone for one and you really would like to come vote for three, you're still going to get your ballot in the mail. Yeah. So it's definitely a daunting task, um, and I just, I, they are so great down there, I can't imagine putting another thing on them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all my questions. Anyone else? I had a question. I think you've already answered it, but I'm going to go into I've been going through the budget book. Okay. Love the way that is set up online. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's, it's so nice. so nice. So anyway, I was just, just, I didn't look at the whole thing, but I looked at a lot of it, and I was going through the department information, and... Of course, the, the, in, within the departments, the only place I saw a big um, increase was in facilities. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you, you already went over that, a lot of that. But is that the entire increase? Because it's like, it's, you know, almost a 200 increase versus the prior year. So it's a lot of the increase, but I think the bigger thing you're seeing is the transfer of the electricity okay. from the schools. So we, last year we had transferred all the electricity and heating fuel from all the other town departments. Okay. This year we did it for the schools too. I see. So I think that's probably the big change you're seeing because that was between that and their facilities costs okay. is $1.6 million. 
And that was not, a, the facilities budget, unfortunately, was not a very big budget to begin with. Yeah. No, yeah. none of it was outrageous. That was just, yeah. I mean, when you look at it, because these are set up so great, you know, these yeah. little bar graphs and everything, and if you're flipping through them, which I was, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I knew that you were having um, a big facilities change, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't know the details, but okay, that makes sense. So does that mean that the school budget is, would see a decrease in their budget because they're not? It technically is. So the school budget, if you include that 1.6 million, was going up by 5.5%. But if you look at the budget in the book, it looks like they're only going up 3%. Okay. I'm sorry. Is it, is it all possible to kind of, especially for the townspeople, I mean, I think we can all understand this, but is there any way, like, for year-over-year -year comparisons to kind of restate the prior year so people see the real change? We could pull, I mean, we could go forward and we could go back and pull electricity and building costs out based on their, it would be based on their actual cost because that's how it runs. Yeah. Um, and I could look at that chart and include the 1.6, you know, that's in the shared service. Just it's certainly not to make a lot of extra no, work, but yeah. I know sometimes when you're trying to do your over-year comparisons, especially the visuals, and you have some kind of like a big change like that, it's, it's just not presenting, uh, it's not presenting a really honest, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say honest, but a really clear picture it's to people to um, yeah. of what the trend is. Yeah. This will be a one-year blip, which will be kind of nice, right? After that, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see where it's coming from. I do think, in a lot of ways, this is going to be very helpful in more transparent. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the schools have bottom-line budgeting, so they can move their money all around. We right. can't, right? So right. we know now that we put it in this budget, it's absolutely going to be used for facilities all the time, which is a good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I certainly see how it would. It could be confu It can be confusing. Does okay. this mean? I mean, like janitorial staff, for example. The janitorial staff will still be old. They're back. staying at the school. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is literally just building maintenance. Building maintenance and the electricity and heating fuel costs. And okay. Yeah. But so, like so repairs. Repairs. Snow yeah. removal still on the schools. Snow removal still on the schools, except for plowing we do. But <laughs> but for instance, like um, all of their 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 elevator contract. So they had an elevator contract. We had an elevator contract. Mm -hmm. Not only did they and we, but so did Rick mm -hmm. Gorman right. and the fire department. There was like nine elevator contracts. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, and we were negotiating them all separately, so we weren't even getting that buying power of having them all together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then if the elevator broke, that we would be looking at the department and saying, your elevator broke. Where are you going to come up with that, right? Like that, that was the way yeah. it was working, and that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I do think this is going to make things much easier, but it definitely makes for a more confusing one year. I think it's a great change. It makes yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sense. It makes so much sense. Have one per, you know, one department managing it that knows, you know, is the ex yeah. expertise has the expertise and consistent budgeting and makes. Yeah. So how many sense. departments are shared now by the schools and the schools and the town, even though the schools are part of the town? I mean, over the last ten years, this has happened several times. I mean, yes. it happened with IT. Right. IT is shared. And IT is shared. And then there was, I think it was leasing of uh, equipment. Yeah, purchasing is purchasing shared. shared. Um, um, the audit is shared. That, that's right. And that's facilities is shared. Okay, so it's basically there's those that, four. That's those four. Yeah. I mean, it makes so much sense to yes. do these. At, why is it taking so long? I mean, <clears throat> and I know because I was involved in that 10 years ago, and it was a lot of animosity. It's, so people get very, very nervous. Yes. And it's very, it's very, it's an interesting kind of social experiment when we do these. Yeah. Because they do, they get very nervous. Like even um, this year we moved all the leases, right, for the copiers. And people were like very concerned about how they were going to make sure they had toner. Like, they, yes. like people are very possessive of their things. Yeah. And so I think it has taken us time to kind of build that trust that, you know, we do it, we're not coming for your toner money, yeah. I promise. <laughs> we just don't want you to have to pay this bill because right. it doesn't make sense to have all these people doing the same work. Well, it makes, it makes sense yeah. to have a contract that is that large. You get a way better deal. Yes. There's just no doubt about it. Yes. And plus it's way more transparent, yes. too. There's, you, there's less ability to tuck funds here, there, and everywhere. Yes. That just stops. No. Um, <laughs> well, you, nobody does. I don't think anybody does it yeah, on purpose. Right. It's a just, but it, no, I know that. But, it, but the thing yeah. is, it's true. It's a natural way to, like, you yeah. know, shuffle things around. And it could um, be that, you know, we wouldn't even know, right? And so, I mean, right. Lynn will know because she can run all of the... Right. When I asked Lynn to run the leases for all of the card machine, and it's seven pages long, I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, we were, if you remember, because we were doing it with cell phones. Yes. Like, we were literally were taking our cell phone bills, handing them out to each other. Oh, that's Writing crazy. ourselves a check. Like, it just, the, the efficiencies are not there. Right. And it's just, it's hard to kind of build that culture of change. But we've had a lot of success, and I think people are buying in because they're seeing, like, oh, wait, my... 
the way I operate hasn't changed at all, right? right. It's like one less thing I have to do yep. so I can focus on fighting fires or yep. you know, purchasing books. And so, no, it makes um, so much sense. It's been good. Well, when Lynn leaves in her big coat with the big pockets all filled, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll know. With the toner. She's going to be taking the toner. <laughs> I will say it's funny to watch the shared services because those budgets are all so small that when there is a change, it looks crazy. So, like, last year we moved all the advertising over there, and it was, like, a 400% increase to the budget. Um, so it is funny to watch such small budgets. When you make a change, it just looks kind of nuts. Yeah. So. Can we quantify savings? Have you guys actually dug deep enough to see that you know, year 22, the total cost for cell phones were X, and now having consolidated, we have a savings of? I don't know. So do we really know that we're achieving yeah. the savings, I guess is my question. So for me, it's been less about the savings and more about the efficiencies. Um, so before, we would have Christine, who's our IT um, admin, literally like kind of walking around, handing out all of these different cell phone bills, and then every department's admin would have to open, call, have a PO for it, and then pay it monthly. Um, and so by not doing that, I think we've seen efficiencies that way. For cost savings, I think we'll see it with the leasing. Gasoline, we didn't really see any change. Um, but that was mostly because with gasoline, what we were doing was we were buying the gasoline, and then we were, selling, we were sending our department's bills. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is in the fit more inefficiencies. I do think you might be missing. I mean, having not looked at it, but I do think it's a great bargaining chip. Yeah. If you go to a company and say, hey, look at total cost of savings or our economies of scales are X, we're going to purchase, you know, 300,000 gallons of gas. And as a result, we'd like our price to yeah. reflect those economies of scale. So I my, think it'll be interesting to see if that works with the leases. Well, I guess, I yeah. think, I guess my, part, my part question, but part request is it, if we can just track that to yeah. see if it's something that it, that we are actually achieving savings as opposed to thinking about it anecdotally, but then also using that as a bargaining chip when we do come for um, renewal of these contracts. Because like any contractor is willing to have a discussion and to, and to sharpen the pencil uh, if given the edict from the buyer. That had to have happened with the um, coffee machines and things like that, all those contracts that had to have been approved. No? You don't think so? So every con right now, all of our coffee machines are on different terms. Oh. And they're yeah. all leases. Yeah. And so it's going to be, like, we're going to have a year of struggle to kind of get this yeah. lined up. Um, I love data, so I'd be happy to look at it and see. <laughs> you know, I think it's a, it's a curious question to see. I think part of what we might struggle with right now is that a lot of the efficiencies that we've made, the prices have escalated more than maybe we typically would have seen them. Yeah. yeah, but I'd be, I'll be curious to look. I do think just, I think generally we probably have mm -hmm. cost savings. Um, because not that any of our departments would ever do this, but if you have money left at the end of the year, right, people hate giving it back. Mm. And so they may be, have been spending it in other ways. Um, and now that's not possible, right, because it's all kind of been gobbled into these big departments yeah. and held. Um, so I'm sure there's probably been efficiencies and savings that way as well. You know what, to, your, to that point, state government is, doesn't necessarily incentivize people to uh, – go through the pains of cost-saving efforts mm -hmm. because there's no real reward for doing it, right? It just kind of creates more work for yourself. So I guess if, if we can kind of go through the data and have more of a granular look, I, I do believe that if we do do that, then when um, these contracts come up, it's a great bargaining tool. Absolutely. And uh, if you have the data, um, it's, it's very compelling for a company to say, here's our data, here's what we're savings, or here's what our total costs were last year. Mm -hmm. If we combine these, all these contracts, here's from a percentage standpoint, we believe this is a fair savings. And I, and I think more often than not, you'll have companies that will be amenable to that discussion. I think that's true. Yeah, so if you can take the data and, and use it, I think you'll find there are some opportunities there. Thank you. All right. Any, anyone else? All right, thanks. We can, we can move past that, uh, that part of the agenda. Although, um, Madam Town Manager, if you'll stay mm -hmm. there, um, our next um, agenda item is the financial reserve policy. So everyone should have uh, should have the financial reserve policy um, in their meeting packet. So I'm assuming we've all looked at it. Um, there are changes uh, to it, and they're noted um, in the uh, document. Um, where additions are underlined in the blue, 
and um, subtractions are crossed out. <clears throat> there is one purple one at the very end as well. Um, but um, Melissa, I, these came from, from your yep. office. So if you wouldn't mind just walking through these, I think that would be helpful to everyone here. Sure. Just, so just for a little background, we actually did a um, full analysis of all of the select board's policies. Um, what we found was that we had some policies that weren't compliant with state law. We had some policies that actually weren't the practice of what was actually happening. Um, and so we went through, we, we spent the entire summer basically working on all of our policies. And what the um, select board is going to be doing is when they reorganize annually, they're going to basically ratify those policies again. Um, that way they know if there's any changes, but also new members buy into what the new policy, old policies are. So one thing we did um, was we added in the Finance Committee Reserve as one of the reserves that we would have. Um, I think the Finance Committee Reserve has worked really well. You know, we haven't had to use it as much, I think, as, you know, could be possible. If you remember correctly, the reason we started the Finance Committee Reserve is that we were carrying kind of a surplus in our health insurance from when we joined the GIC, basically. Yep. And we were using that at the end of the year to kind of offset costs. And we said, you know, it would be a lot more transparent if we created this finance committee reserve and there was a way that we would go before you with an application and say, hey, this is where we are. And so um, we wanted to make sure that we inserted that in here so that it would be something that kind of we would do moving forward. Right. If I wasn't here or Lynn wasn't here, that you would continue to have that Live finance on. committee reserve. Yeah, because I just think it works well. Um, the next thing that we changed was the OPEB language. So the OPEB language was never updated after that committee finalized their work. So we just wanted to make sure that it now read that $75,000 shall be deposited annually and for any, and also it should say and 6000 for a person for new positions. So I'll make sure that says, I think it does say 6000 on the line website, but I, that should read annually 75000 shall be deposited and $6,000 per person for new positions shall be charged to the cost center. And charge to the cost center is kind of an important point. So, you know, if the schools bring new positions on, I've asked them to really think about what the cost of that is. And so we know that when you bring a new position on, it typically a position cost between seventeen and eighteen thousand dollars plus this six thousand um, dollars. And so, you know, it's not really kind of fair to just put you know, an eighty thousand dollar salary in and say, oh, well, the rest of it's on you. So I just want to make sure that if we're doing that, we're really honest about what a new employee costs. Um, and then. One more, One which, more yeah. so this was about the specialized stabilization account, and you heard my little rant about this earlier, but I just, I, I, it, the account generally makes me uncomfortable. Um, I just don't think that it's the way we should deal with deficits. You know, it, I wouldn't come to you and say, um, I underfunded, I don't even know, who knows what, health insurance, right? I underfunded health insurance, and I'd like you to create a reserve that I can go to every year. Right to offset it, right? I, if that's the case, I'd rather just figure out what's the adequate funding. Right. And we know that special education can certainly be flux, right? We know that kids come in and out, that we can have large placements. Um, but I think by holding that in your reserve instead of here, right, we're showing that we're actually planning for it, we're budgeting for it, we right. know it's a possibility instead of continuing to go to a stabilization account that's really for, more for a one-time revenue. Um, yeah, and it, it does, and like Lynn's saying, it, it creates an unbalanced budget, and that's just not something that we want to see. So, you know, I just wanted to reiterate in this that rather than go, you know, automatically to the special ed stabilization account every year, let's work on trying to do it within the budget. That's great. So anybody have any questions about any of those changes? And no? we did delete this special town meeting language. There's no legal reason why that transfer needed to be at a special town meeting. I'm not yeah. sure. My only thing I could think of was that, and Lenny, maybe you know, that they waited until the last possible second to see if they needed it or not, and then they'd call a special okay. within the annual. So that's not, yeah, we know well in advance if we're going to have a deficit, so. Okay. Okay. So are we going to have a deficit this year for this and have to... I anticipate that the schools will have deficits this year. I don't anticipate that we'll be using this to offset the deficit. I do anticipate that we'll be using this to offset 
the teacher's contract, perhaps, which we planned for all along. I'd actually like this account to go entirely away. I don't think we should have it at all. Um, but I, I'm not sure if there'll be an article for it this year or not. You're talking about the SPED account. The SPED account. I, I, my ultimate goal is to get everyone to a comfortable place where we no longer have this account. Interesting. Mm, yes. I'm just, I remember when it was put together. I mean, it would be like me saying, you know, we need a snow and ice special education, special, no, snow right. and ice stabilization account, right? <coughs> it's just, it's not, it's not a great way to operate. Um, and we spend so much time kind of reiterating to people that we can't use one-time revenue right. yeah. for recurring expenses because mm -hmm. it creates a structural deficit. Right. And then we create a policy that's literally doing that every year. So for me, it's, and I know it's like, it's baby steps a little bit with this one. Um, but I think that your reserve is just a much more appropriate place. So Wait, where do, sorry, where do you think is more appropriate place? The finance committee the reserve. Finance committee reserve, rather than having it within the mm -hmm. school yes. budget. Oh, yes. okay. I see. Yep. And that way, like I do, I come to you with an application right. and I say, we, are, we have an issue here, right, because of the following nine mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and it's presented publicly and transparently so that there's a, a vote. And, you know, there hasn't been a single year mm -hmm where there hasn't been a hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars available in the um, reserve account that could be used for a special education if we needed it. So, so you didn't want to make that a must instead of every effort should? <laughs> well, right. I was just going <laughs> to... We certainly steps, could. I get it. I mean, um, <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because yeah. I was going to say I like your point and it feels like this word should be strong. This yeah. language should be stronger. We absolutely <laughs> I don't know how to must. make it stronger. I mean, because even if you say must... Um, yeah, I mean, it's I mean, still, how, who, every no, it, effort is a subjective <laughs> yeah. thing, no. so Actually. it's kind of irrelevant if right. it says should or must. My I mean, plan in the next three years is to eradicate this policy entirely, but, you know, I think we got to get through this year's and then... Yep. Historically, does it, does, so does it get funded every year but not typically used? No. It has oh, so... It was, a, it was, it was a one-time dump of money in there and then it's just kind of sitting there? It used to get funded. And it, it was used all the time. And right? it was used it, until it, I started. Yeah, it, it kind of started when the the school budget was re really lean. I mean, mm -hmm. really, really lean. As in, when I served again, ten years plus, it's like we would have a negative number for the next year. Mm -hmm. So we would be zero increase um, level service. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if something weird happened, forget about it. So this was just like this was. Where did the money come from, Stan? There was a lump of money that came from the federal government from something, and it was it got stuck in the, this reserve just for that because we ran on such lean budgets, and that changed. It has changed. It, it, well, we got a new town manager, and it positive. changed. Yeah, believe I mean, it or not, I mean, it was like things changed, yeah. um, and it's we, it just isn't the same circumstances anymore. So, Melissa, um, do we should we not uh, vote? I mean, how, how do you want to proceed? For tonight, you mean? Yeah. Well, I try. Do you want to make any changes to the current language? Well, I, look, the language before us is does doesn't include the six thousand per person. Yeah, I can. We can make that amendment. As, you can say as amended. That, that's what. So that's yeah. that's where I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, do you want to say must? I I don't think it's going to materially change. I, I was. Intellectually, I was curious if mm -hmm. there was a different reason you didn't use must, no. um, because I agree with the whatever assessment, of whoever made the assessment, that it's not going to materially change. I think the, the school administration and our administration has made every effort to fund these deficits through the operating. We really like yeah. we've, we we buckle down and look. Um, and sometimes it's not easy, right? Sometimes it's a matter of kind of saying to people, no spending, no, you know. Right. And other times it's it's an easier year. Um, we've been blessed the last couple of years because snow and ice has been low or still, still high, but not like, you know, blow it high like we've seen in other years. Um, but, you know, I think that was why the language is the way it is. Um, I'm not so stuck on this one because I really do think we're going to be able to move forward with I, not having it okay. eventually. I, that's the sense I get from this committee that we would be supportive of that. So if you, I, you know. I will say, for speaking for myself, if you are comfortable with this language, I, I'm okay with it. Yeah. But I, but I, I would I see nodding heads. Everybody, 
Nobody has a, an amendment to that? Okay. I'm so sorry, that, can I just make a point Of course you can. No. Um, <laughs> bullet point three under the Special Education Stabilization Fund. It feels like there's a word missing in there. Should it, should it say that in order to ensure the fund is not depleted and probable, the aggregate amount of transfers from the fund in any two consecutive fiscal years is <coughs> limited to 400000 It feels like there's a... I mean, the aggregate amount is 400000 says we're going to transfer 400000 I think that's what was happening. I think oh. that really it was, like, 250, 150, 250, 150 like oh. very formulaic in how the... Hmm. Um, and they and it was going to the four hundred thousand dollars, but it says from the fund, mm -hmm. the transfer. So they were transferring. They were transferring from the fund every year in a formulaic way, one hundred fifty, two hundred, one hundred fifty, two hundred. Based on my past understanding of the warrants, that's pretty much what was happening. Mm. It was this was basically being used <laughs> as a as a budget tool. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I don't. Yeah. I like your plan to get rid of this then, because this is, doesn't seem. Yeah. That doesn't apply anymore. Then at least it shouldn't we say. Have, yeah, I mean, well, we're not using it right now. Right. right. Uh, to me, it should say it's at least limited to yeah. four hundred or something. All right. Um, so it should not exceed. Something. So do you, did you want to make a formal amendment? Well, I mean, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. You could say the I mean, aggregate amount of transfers from the fund in any two consecutive fiscal years shall not exceed four hundred thousand right. dollars. Shall, shall not yeah. exceed is what I'm thinking. Okay, so 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 yep. So we have one motion made by Regina to uh, include shall not exceed in number three under the special education stabilization fund uh, before the four hundred thousand uh, note. Then we have another um, amendment yeah. by Cur oh. what? Oh, I was sorry. I was by Regina yeah. <laughs> to include the six thousand yeah. dollar figure. Yeah. In um, light item two under OPEB, yes, six thousand per person shall be cost. deposited and and insert six thousand, the figure of six thousand before per person. Got it. In that one, so I'm, I'm sorry, not to be picked too picky, but is it per person per year indefinitely? It's per person per year for ten years. Okay, so we should be specific. Yeah. That it, we should per person per year for ten years. <laughs> yes. Boom. So do we have a second to that motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. So then we've. So now um, I would accept a motion to vote um, for the entire acceptance of the entire policy. So moved. Article. Second. Second. Second by Keith. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. We have passed. The, we have adopted the Article Three financial reserve policies. Thank you very Thank much you. for all of your time, except for Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Just only kidding. Been here four days. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Even I Kyle. Your time. Even <laughs> Kyle. Um, again, any questions or you want to hear from anybody, we're available. Just Thank let you. us know. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great as always. Oh, yes. Thank you. Really, yeah. so good. I'm going to go drink the rest of my coffee. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, two more items on the agenda. So the next item is a discussion of the financial, com the finance committee um, warrant article letter. So we, for those of, of you who weren't here in the last meeting, we discussed um, that everyone was going to take the same section of that letter again this year. So that as you, as we go through these meetings, if you could be thinking about how you're going to craft it so that we can craft it right away and get this, Kyle, you can't come back. <laughs> um, so that if we could have that done right when we're done, I think it'll be a little smoother this year instead of uh, rolling in to town meeting having just approved it. So if everybody keep that in mind, that was the only reason I, I kept this back on the agenda was just to reiterate that point for anyone who wasn't here at the last meeting. And for anyone who wasn't here for the last meeting, are there any questions, comments, concerns? I didn't say that you were going to email us. And I didn't do that. Thank you. You're right. As to what everybody's assigned to yes. was last year. So, yeah. I'll do that. I definitely have it. Um, 
version too of the entire letter that you I do it. It's actually in the packet, but I, I will the resend out editable. that. Yeah. Yep. I okay. will I will resend out both and I will do it this time, I promise. <laughs> okay. Um that one completely escaped me, so I apologize. Okay. So then the uh final uh, agenda item tonight is the approval of the July twelfth, twenty twenty three minutes and the February twelfth, twenty twenty four minutes. So I would happily entertain a motion for one or both of those. I think, you know what, actually, let's do it. I wasn't at one of those meetings, so I can't vote for both of them. So uh, let's do it individually. So could we have a motion for the July 12th, 2023 um, minutes? I move approval of the minutes of the February 12th, 2024. 23. 23. 23. 23. Oh, it says, Wait, 23. It says 2023. No, it says July. That's February 12th. Yeah. Okay. But we also have another one from July 12th, oh, I'm sorry, 2023. I'm That's the one I wasn't at. Okay. Do that because I don't have that in front of me, Regina. Okay. Uh, I will move approval of the meeting meeting minutes from February 12th, 2024. That's. Oh, you want me to do? Okay. So I, I wasn't at the. That's good. So do we have a second? Yes. Second, yeah. second over here. So all those in favor of accepting the February 12th? Nope. <laughs> this is getting yeah. much more difficult. Yes. Than this. Sorry. Seriously. July 12, 2023, minutes. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Oh, I'm abstaining. I wasn't there. I'm, I am well. abstaining as well. Yeah. I am as well. Yeah. So, so, so well, do you have enough people to vote on that I then? I was there for the July one. Make sure we're yeah. talking about We do because we're just oh. abstaining. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. abstaining. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Was, you said July. you were remote. So, okay. yes, I, seven, I missed it. February. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So now we're on the February 12th, 2024 <laughs> minutes. We have a motion. We are so bad. Go ahead, Chris. I move we approve the February 12th, 2024 minutes. Thank Second by Chris Second. Allen. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. We have one final motion for the evening. And I'm going to let, I'm not even going to say it. Thank you. Regina uh, moves that we adjourn. Okay, Second. Can I ask one question? Of course you can. Um, so in the packet, it looks like the Do you warrant, want Kyle to come back? No. no. <laughs> the warrant letter from last year is a PDF. Okay, so a you want it as a word. Yep. Yeah, yes. That's what I did. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, she asked that. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the where's the word version? Sorry. I'm just going to say that. Okay, right, right, right. And in addition, okay. I'm going to send out everybody's thing. Okay, Does that right. make sense? Thank you, yeah. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so now all of those in favor. <laughs> I'm just going to say we'll swipe at right? Kyle! Just kidding. We are adjourned. All right. Thank you. 817. Thank you all very, awesome. very much. Thank you.